many of you guys know me. Um, my name is Brennan, Brennan Thompson. I graduated from Bergamer High School in 2015. Um, from there, I went on to college, played football in college, had a blast. Um, and since then, I've kind of been all over the place. I'm traveling all over, doing a bunch of different stuff. Um, so it wasn't really too long ago uh, since I was sitting in your guys' seats, actually. Now, I'm still a little confused as to why Mr. Monso was kind enough to let me come and speak to you guys. Um, I'm forever thankful for that. Um, and I guess I, I guess I have the idea of why. Um, like she said, I've been doing a lot of stuff. I was able to raise some money for Herkimer. Um, that was because I was dumb enough to tell everybody that I would hike Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa um, in an effort to raise some money. Um, so I'm here today. There we go. Um, I'm here today to just kind of talk to you guys, get in front of you guys um, before you kind of go out into the world. I know you guys are all seniors. Um, I guess before I go any farther, I should probably preface by saying when I was in your guys' seats, uh, if I'm being honest, I wasn't the greatest student in the world, you know. Um, I just kind of got good enough grades so I didn't piss my mom off. Um, all I really cared about was playing football, having fun at the games, you know, maybe impressing some girls, going on to college, and being able to play in college. Um, that's, that's what really mattered to me. And, you know, despite me kind of, you know, being a little bit lazy, being a little short-sighted, I've been lucky enough to go on and do a lot of fun things in life and really get the most out of life. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where I wanted to start. I guess before I say anything else, I wanted to make one thing really clear, and that's that we are all humans, right? You know, we're all we're humans. Um, as a result, we were not put on this planet to sit in front of a desk for 8, 10, 12 hours a day. We were not put on this planet to work concrete, paint houses, you know, tell our boss why we were 15 minutes late to work, ask for permission, uh, ask why we go to the bathroom or something like that. Um, we were put here on this planet to, you know, survive, to thrive, to create, innovate, move forward, do things that are fun and inspire us. And I know, you know, being from Herkimer, it's, it can be tough, you know? Everybody's got that stigma that says, you know, you're from Herkimer, you know, people don't care, there's, no one ever makes it out, there's no good jobs around here, we don't make money. And um, I don't really think that that's right. Um, I believe that each of us was born with some kind of dream in our heart. You know, it sounds a little bit corny, we were born with a dream in our heart. Um, and that's our life's purpose, to fulfill that dream. And as a result, we were also given every set of skills that we need to see that dream come true. So, I guess before I go any farther, I wanted to say we have to beware of this trap. Now, my say Brennan, Sound like a hippie. Been spending too much time out in California. I didn't really tell you guys that's where I live right now. But Brandon, you sound like a hippie. Spent too much time in California. But I wanted to make you guys aware of the trap. And the trap is this. You know, we're from a small town. Everybody says, you can't get out. They said there's no money. There's no good jobs. So what do we do? We do what everybody says. We go to school. We get good grades. We do the clubs. You know. Maybe be a member of National Honor Society. I completely agree with all of these things. Um, I think these are all fantastic and this is what we have to do. But after four years, if we're lucky, we go on, we go to college, and we pick some type of mold to fit into. Be it doctor, lawyer, window washer, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, and from there, after four years, we graduate, we get out, we get a job, we're making money, we're happy. And life is good. But the problem is, like I said earlier, we all have this dream, we have this thing that we're meant to be doing, and it starts to bubble up inside of us. Now this is something that I kind of ran into when I got out of college. Um, so eventually, time goes by, you say, all right, I'm gonna pick up this dream, I'm gonna start doing it. You know, maybe you have a little bit of a side hustle. You know, everybody's got a side hustle nowadays. Um, you do it in your spare time, you say, all right, when I have more money, when I have more time, I'm gonna chase my dream. Problem is, life is. You know, you maybe you meet a nice girl, you meet a nice boy, you settle down, buy a house. You know, 
know, you uh, have some kids, you got bills, you got obligations now. And that's where we're going into trouble because that dream takes a backseat to life. From there, put our kids to school, they go to college, they graduate. What happens? We live for retirement. We say, well, achieve these dreams when we retire. You know, that's when I'll spend my time doing what I was put on this planet to do. You know, it was a glory. It was 20 years. I'll be there. But by then, it's too late. We're tired. The world's kind of beating us down. So then, we live out our days. We die, and our dream dies with us. It sounds dramatic, but like I said, we all have this dream that was put in our hearts. And if we die with that dream, the world doesn't get our gift. And that, to me, is the biggest shame um, that we really have today. So, I believe there's two things that we can do to combat this. How do we avoid the trap? Step one is to believe. You know, you gotta believe in yourself. You know, it's, it's tough, man. When you're out there, you got this dream that you got in your heart, and everyone thinks you're crazy for it. You know, and that's something that I've been, I don't know, I kind of stumbled upon this because I was stupid enough to believe that no matter what happened, I was going to have more out of life. You know, I was going to believe in myself. I was going to do something good. Um, so that's where it started for me. Um, so despite everything else that happened, I knew that I was going to go on. I was going to believe in myself no matter what. Um, and I guess that's kind of what brings me to my whole <laughs> expedition uh, with Kilimanjaro. I guess it's a good place to kind of start with that. So when COVID started, uh, I thought, all right, I'm in California. Herkimer's pretty tough. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to help out. I decided with one of my friends that we were going to hike 12 highest peaks in California over the next 12 months, raise some money, and top it all off. We'd go to Africa, we'd hike Mount Kilimanjaro, um, and that would be it. So I started that, and I was excited about it. I was calling everybody, telling everybody, I called my mom, told my friends, told my dad, and uh, I'll never forget, I called my grandmother and called up and said, Grandma, I'm excited, I'm doing this thing, I'm going to Kilimanjaro, it's going to be awesome, I'm going to raise money for her career. How awesome is this? Never forget what she said. She said, Brennan, you've never, never hiked a day in your life. You can't go to Africa. This COVID's going on. What are you going to do? You can't even get in the country. I said, ah, doesn't matter, Grandma. I'll, I'll worry about it when I get there. It's 12 months away. I'll worry about it when I get there. So, what she do? She pauses. Here, she takes a deep sigh. She goes, I don't think that's a very good idea. I was like, ah, I don't really care, Grandma. I'll talk to you. I love you. Bye. Hang up the phone. And we sit back. I think maybe she's right. I couldn't find my way around the woods because my life depended on it. You know, I've never hiked a day in my life. This COVID thing is getting pretty bad. How the heck am I going to do this? Man, I really got myself in a pickle here. And I said, ah. I'll worry about it later. I'm doing it anyway. I can do this. I can figure this out. And that's kind of where everything has really stemmed from. You know, a lot of times in life, you're not going to know the answer. You're not going to have support. Or at least the support that you think you're going to have. But you got this dream in your heart, and you're going to have to believe in it no matter what. So, a couple months pass. Make it to the top. I make it back down. I raise a couple thousand dollars. Guess the first person I call is my grandma. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna rub it in this old lady's face, right? So I say, Grandma, I did it. Made it to the top, made it back down, I'm alive. Got all my fingers, got all my toes. She said, Grandma, I'm proud of you. I knew you'd always do it. She paused, took a deep breath, said, You're still an idiot, though, Grandma. I guess I'm a fault. Um, so, yeah, I guess what I'm trying to get at with this is that. You know, you're going to have people in your life, whether it's friends, family members, teachers, coaches, even, that have your best interests in mind, but they're going to kind of push you in a direction that might not be aligned with that dream that's in your heart that I've been talking about. So, first and foremost, you're going to have to believe in yourself. Now, why is this so important? Because beliefs lead to thoughts, thoughts lead to feelings, feelings are the result of our, our feelings lead to our behavior. And behaviors are our life, you know. That's what that's 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 what we are. 
our behaviors are our lives. So say for example, you have a dream to maybe be a professional football player. You know, that was, that was my dream in high school. I wanted to be a professional football player. So I, I believed in it a little bit, you know, but it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, my, my life. You know, I, I thought I, had, I was pretty quick, you know, I was, I was pretty strong, I knew what I was doing. So I would go out there and game day and I'm thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm okay, I'm not bad. And, you know, I feel pretty confident with all the things and I would go out there and have pretty good games. I, I would do okay. But, you know, I'd think back on it and think, if I had thought, man, I put in the work, I've been in the weight room every single day out there in the summer. I've been grinding, it's in my playbook, watching film. And I feel a little more confident going out there and I play a little bit better. Maybe I could have went to a better school. Maybe from there I could have Maybe had a pro day, go on, play in Canada, get on a practice squad, something, you know? But this is where everything starts. Everything starts with a belief. And uh, you don't have to really take my word for it. My man, Conor McGregor, says, all that matters is how you see yourself. If you see yourself as a king, with all the belts and everything, and no matter what anyone else says, as long as you see that and you really believe in it, then that's what's going to happen. <coughs> Got a couple more. Henry David Thoreau, who's Wow, man, he lived in the woods. Um, he says, I learned this, at least by my experiment, that if anyone advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live a life which he has imagined, he will meet with success unexpected in common hours. That's about Nace. David Goggins. I don't know how many of you guys know, know Goggins. I love Goggins. He's a man. Um, he says, most of us are motivated as hell to do anything to pursue our dreams until those around us remind us of the danger, the downside, our own limitations, and all the people before us that didn't make it. Now, sometimes advice comes from a well-intentioned place. They really believe that they're doing it for your own good, but if you let them, these same people will talk you out of your dreams. Now, it's just something to remember, something to think about. You say, Brennan, I've been here for too long. I'm a senior, everyone's been telling me all these things, you know, it's, it's tough to get out of her camera. I'm not really believing in my dreams too much anymore. Oh, good news is, Marie Forlow says, studies in neuroscience show that we can grow new neural networks and train our brain to think in new ways. Whatever thought we repeat most often and with the most emotional intensity, we reinforce. Physically, we're strengthening and building new neural networks. So that means we can literally hardwire our beliefs into our brains and nervous systems. And whatever thoughts we don't use or reinforce will grow weak and eventually fade away. So, in other words, that means we have those negative limiting thoughts and beliefs, all we have to do is not give them attention. Don't validate them, and eventually we'll start to fade away. At the same time, we can program our brains with new beliefs, beliefs that are positive, beliefs that are useful to us. You know, like I was talking about earlier, if you want to be a professional football player, you've got to believe that you're the best. You want to go on and, I don't know, maybe go to design school. You've got to believe that you're creative, that you can do this, that you can get out, that you're more. And I think that that's something that's very important to remember after you guys graduate. Now, I remember, at least before I go to step two, I remember earlier I said that uh, when I was in your guys' seats, I didn't really care about too much. Remember, I was, uh, didn't care about my grades, didn't uh, care about anything other than playing football. And uh, I was smart enough to take that attitude on the college with me, where I did the same thing. You know, I got good enough grades so it didn't piss my mom off. I played football. You know, I was having fun. We get a couple of girls, go to some parties, have fun. You know, college. Woo! It's fun. Everybody loves college. And uh, after four years of this, this was my reward. That's right. I was a janitor. I was a janitor in Disney World. I was the guy you see sweeping up the popcorn, cleaning the tables, picking up people's puke off their eyes, and handle it. That was me. That was my life. And uh, yeah, imagine that. Four year degree, I was captain of the football team, and now I was cleaning, excuse my language, but people shit off the floor. It sucked. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it was a tough time in my life. You know, I was able to save maybe like 25 bucks every month after paying for gas, groceries, my rent, it sucked, it really sucked. And um, 
I knew what I learned in school wasn't going to help me out of this little pickle that I got myself into. Don't get me wrong, school's great, love school, can't underestimate the importance of school, but sometimes you got to take things into your own hands. So I said, I'm going to do something drastic. I've always loved to read books. I said, I'm going to start reading. So I'm going to start reading. i got to learn, you know. All these books, I started reading, they kind of said the same thing. I said, Brennan, you've got to set goals. I said, goals, set goals, set goals. So the birds, man, what's set goals going to do for me? I'm out here picking up puke, crap every day off the ground, so setting goals, get out of here. It's not going to do anything. So I went on with my life. Kept doing what I was doing. Things got, now they went from bad to worse real quick. Now I didn't see a way out. Started to get desperate. So I said, you know what? Give this, give this goal thing a try. So I sat down one day, got a pen, clicked it open, had a piece of paper, wrote down my goals. Never forget my goals. My goals were this. Number one, save $500, which was a stretch at that point in my life. Um, save $500, get a new job, and never clean shit off the floor again. Those are my three goals. Real ambitious goals. And at the same time, I had a little plan of action in my head. I said, okay, how am I gonna, how am I gonna achieve these goals? So, I made a plan. I said, every month, I'm gonna save $50. I'm gonna cut my grocery bill down. I'm only eating PB and J's, that's it. That's all I'm gonna eat. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. I still don't think my mom even knows this. She'd probably kill me. Um, but PB and J's for every month. On top of that, I'm gonna start taking some Google Ad certifications. So I can beef up my resume a little bit, and I'm gonna apply to jobs. Apply to jobs every day. Five days with applying jobs, applying jobs, applying jobs. A couple months passed. I was found myself on a plane to LA. I had a job with an awesome company um, doing marketing, and advertising in LA, and um, I had a little over two thousand dollars in my pocket. Now for me, it doesn't seem like much now, but for me, that was a big thing, you know. Man, I sit back, thinking about it. I knew this whole thing would work. You know, I'm the smartest guy alive. I know it all. I got it all. But I say this because I don't want to underestimate the importance of setting goals. Gotta set goals, no matter what. Now, I got to study you guys. Let's go to China today. Let's go to China. Let's get up here. Let's walk to China together. Maybe we grab hands and skip out of here. We head up German Street, you know, maybe get to State Street, get on the throughway, and we say, all right, where we go, east or west? I look at you, you look at me, and say, I, I, I don't know where to go. I, how do you get to China? How do you get there? You don't know unless you got a map. And life is the same exact way. How are you going to know where you're going in life if you don't have goals? You need a map. So we got to set goals. Now, setting goals, like I said, are easy. Take out a pen, take out a piece of paper, you're writing down. That's all there is to it. But, there are some important things to remember when we're setting goals. Above all else, we got to remember that we cannot set realistic goals. We cannot. It sounds crazy, but we cannot set realistic goals. Grant Boy, Grant Cardone, he says it best. Never set realistic goals. You can get a realistic life without setting goals for it. You know, you got like I said, you guys have a dream. Everybody's got a dream. It's in your heart. You got to do something that excites you, inspires you, gets you out of bed every morning. Or else you're never going to want to do it. You're never ever going to want to do it. You'll never have the motivation. You'll never have the drive. Got to set unrealistic goals. How do you set goals, Brian? Well, I've been setting goals for two years now, and now everyone's got their own way of doing it. This is how I do mine. I say goals, the year, I put my dream at the top, and I write down three little time periods. You say short term, excuse me, six months, you got your medium goals, one to two years, your long term goals, three to five years. You say, all right, you work backwards. Where do I want to be? What's my dream? Where do I want to be in three to five years? Where do I want to be in one to two years? Where do I want to be in six months? You guys are seniors, some football players in here, maybe you want to. Go on and be a professional football player. You know, get a jump on things. Want to be a starting quarterback for the Patriots. Who knows? Six months, what do you got to do? You got to say three goals. 
want to get into college, you want to, I don't know, get into college, you want to make sure that you're fast, you want to make sure that you're smart. All right, so what do we got to do? Goal number one, I want to get into college. Beneath that goal, we have an action step. So what are we going to do? How are we going to get into college? Well, we're going to have to study. We're going to have to get good grades. You can be the greatest football player in the world, but if you can't get into school, what good is it? Number two, you want to be fast, you want to be strong? All right, what's your action step? You spend five days a week in the gym. No one else is in there, you're going to be in there. Last but not least, you want to be smart, you want to be smart player on the field, you're going to watch some film every night before you go to bed. Easy. Not hard. Just laying out a plan, taking it step by step, breaking it down, and we're doing it. Medium goals, one to two years. What do you want to do? You want to be a starter at your college football team. That's great. Everybody in college are a little bigger, a little stronger, a little smarter. You're going to have to be a leader. So, your goals. All right, I want to be a leader on the team. Number one. Number two, I'm going to have to get faster and stronger. I'm going to have to be smart. Nothing changes. So, I'm going to start reading some books on leadership, maybe. Maybe I'll start going to the gym a little bit more. So, five times a week, I go six. Last but not least, I'll start getting in the playbook. As soon as I get accepted to college, I get in the playbook. Before you know it, you'll start, things are going good. Long term goals, three to five years, you say, All right, this is when I want to go. I want to go to the NFL at that time. It's about the time, you know, so what do you need? Maybe you got to set some records, catch some people's attention. Maybe, I don't know, you want to get a pro day. It's a little bit harder to set goals farther out because it's a long, long ways away. But maybe those are your goals. So you say, Okay, every year I have to throw for X amount of yards, maybe it's 5,000 yards a year, whatever it is, something ridiculous, something crazy. You have to lead your team to a national championship. And when you lay it out like this, it seems achievable. When you look at it like this, it kind of seems like, okay, maybe, maybe this is possible. Maybe I'm not the greatest talent in the world, but I, I've got these goals, I've been achieving them, so I have to build some momentum. The next thing you know, you're knocking your goals one down by one. Cannot underestimate the importance of setting goals. Now, I'm going to talk to you guys for maybe 15, 20 minutes here and ramble on a little bit, but there's three things that I really wanted you guys to take away from today, and that was, number one, you're going to have to have a dream. Every single one of us has got a dream in our heart, and we got to do everything we can to protect it and to believe in it. Because this dream, this is our whole life, determines the course of our life. It is essential. Protect it with your life. Number two, we gotta set goals and we gotta take action. You know, how are you gonna get to China if you don't have a map? You're gonna need to set goals in order to determine the direction of your life. It's simple, it's easy. Take action, do it. No one else is gonna to wanna to do it. You gotta do it. Number three, what do we have to lose? You got your high school, 17, 18, 19 years old, maybe some of you. I was talking to Mr. Real over here, he said, they lost a football game a couple weekends ago because some guy was super senior. Maybe you guys are like 20, 21, whatever it is. 18. <laughs> 18. Yeah, whatever it is. You guys got nothing to do. You guys are young. You know, you guys screw up, you start over. What's the big deal? You screw up again, you start over again. You screw up again, you start over again. You got nothing to lose. You're playing with house money. From her current member. No one cares about us. You got nothing to lose. So, well, I'll let you guys remember those three things. Um, if you guys ever need anything, feel free to reach out to me. I got my number up there. I got my email up there as well. If you guys ever set any goals, um, you want to talk to them or talk to me about them, feel free to reach out. I love this stuff. I'd love to talk to you guys about it. Um, if you guys ever need help with anything, you, right, you guys get out of college or you're, you're looking for a job, whatever it is, I'm more than happy to help. Um, so yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mrs. Tomaso, for letting me come in today. And uh, yeah, it was great to meet all you guys.
things that you do are as long as you are focused on doing this. So one of the good things that you did was you made this goal that you were going to climb mountains and you were going to help your community by doing that. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I wanted to really put this out there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And we got about 10 minutes left. Perfect. Yeah. Just for a frame of reference. Oh, awesome. Sorry. Use the mic. No, I do like the mic. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. I feel like I started using this thing. If I saw someone coming. No, you did, you did a really good job. <laughs> was this your first time doing something like this? Yeah. yeah. You did a really good job. Yeah, this is my life. Appreciate that. But no, um, yeah, I, I kind of didn't really talk about this too much. Um, but like to Mr. Pinkston also said, um, I was sitting around kind of during COVID and I wanted to do something, you know. Birch Murray had always held a special plate in my place in my heart, you know, it's at the end of the day it's what makes us all who we really are. You know, it's where we kinda of get our attitudes from, you know, like people that we've known here our whole lives, there's a lot of people who don't leave, they have kids, they do whatever. Um, so I said, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think back about Herc Murray. I'd love to donate some money or do something, how the heck am I gonna do it? No, no one's gonna care about this. Thousand miles across the country, no one, no one gives a crap. Um, so I thought, all right, I gotta do something, something drastic, something will make people pay attention. So I thought, you know, I'll hike these mountains in California, which you guys don't know, that's where a lot of the biggest mountain ranges in the United States are. Um, never hiked a day in my life. And then I said, I'll go to Africa, I'll hike Mount Kilimanjaro in a year's time. So I said, all right, those are my goals. I said I wanted to raise $6,000, and and I just built a website. I started reaching out to as many people as I could. Um, you know, just little things. Like I said, you gotta set goals. Some of my short-term goals are build this website, start to talk to some people about it, you know, post some Instagram videos about it, get some attention around it, get some people going. Um, and uh, I started hiking mountains. And the money came in slowly, and like anything else in life, eventually you hit a wall. We were about um, two months out. I still had to raise like two thousand dollars. My goal was six thousand dollars. Each and close, maybe grandma was right. Um, so my friend and I we actually we got a little creative. Um, my friend he went around LA and he said, "All right, everybody that donates five dollars, we're gonna give a bottle of water out to a homeless person." So yeah. <laughs> A ton of people donated, so we ended up taking all these cases of water, we cost cost these cases of water, going down the Skid Row, I don't know how many of you guys have ever heard of Skid Row, but it's, it's tough, man, it's, it's not a good place to be. So there's two couple of kids, you know, from Herkimer, he's from Pooja Falls and all of them, were standing out water bottles, it's homeless people in Skid Row, that was a good fundraiser, and then we said, okay, we need a little bit more money, what do we do, what do we do? It's, I'm not too proud of this one, but uh, we said, all right, every person that donates five dollars, we're gonna, we're gonna shop on a beer for them. So you know that people love that. Donated, I think people donated seven hundred dollars to see that. I was drinking beers for a week, trying to raise money for this. It was awful. Um, so yeah, it, it, you, you have these goals. You say, you know what? No matter what it takes, I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna do it. Whether that means going to Skid Row and handing out homeless bottles, bottles of water to homeless people, or shotgun a beer, you, you do what you gotta do. And eventually, I reached that goal before I even had went to Kilimanjaro, and people loved it, people were involved in it, they kept going, and they kept supporting, and I blew past my goal, well over a thousand dollars past my goal, um, and then it was time to go to Africa, so I went to Africa, and had all my stuff packed up, I went to New York City, because I fly out JFK, flew all the way over here, and uh, we missed our flight, because of COVID, you know, we didn't know we needed a COVID test because we had all of our homes had our vaccines, so we missed our flight. I said, man, maybe we shouldn't be going there because, you know, this is someone telling us that we shouldn't do this. Said, all right, we're going to figure it out. We're going to figure it out. So we talked to some people. We said, okay, we can get a COVID test right now and we can fly out on the next plane the next day. So we all got our COVID test. That's a negative, thankfully. And we're on the phone with the airlines for two, three hours trying to figure out when, what kind of plane we can get on, when we can fly out, we're trying to talk to the tour guides in Africa, um, and long story short, it all ended up working out, we went to Africa, it was absolutely amazing, you know, like I said before, you're a small town kid from her somewhere like this, you're in Africa, you're just like looking around, oh my god, what am I doing here, um, and you get to the base mountain, you're looking up, and you're just saying, there's just no way, I don't know, but you do it, you know, you take one step forward every single day, it's like, Everything else I've been talking about, you know, take small steps, one step a day, and eventually you get to the top, you reach your goal. 
I guess that's a uh, good, good metaphor for life. You know, just keep moving ahead, keep that dream in your heart, keep believing, keep looking at the end goal, take one step forward every single day, no matter how hard it gets, no matter what resistance you meet, um, and everything will work itself out. You know, if you got a good intention in your heart, I've learned one thing, if you have a good intention in your heart, and um, you, you do the best you can with it, it all ends up working out. So, yeah. The free cabin for Grand Yep, it was. $3,687 for Kirkham Athletics and same exact amount to Catholic Charities of Kirkham County. So a little over seven grand over the course of, of roughly a year, being 2,000 miles away, um, thinking no one was going to give a crap, the only people would donate or maybe my amazing mom, and, uh, like I said, my grandmother, myself, just whatever. Thank you for thinking of it. I had to care about it here too because she is our athletic director. There she is. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for your help as well. Thank you, Mr. Maso. I know it's hard to see when you guys are kind of sitting here, you're a senior, you don't really think too much about any of the administrators or the teachers or anything, but like I said before, all these people really do have your best interest in mind. They really care about you guys, and they're always here to help you guys with anything, you know? I haven't talked to Mrs. Maso for, what, been four years, five or six years. It's been a long time. I reached out to her, I reached out to, I reached out to so many people, <laughs> every single person got back to me right away. They were more than happy to help. They were excited to help. So uh, I guess don't forget this um, confidence that you guys all go out there and do great things in your life. But don't forget to come back. There's always people here that are willing to help. There's always people that need your help as well. Um, so yeah, anything you guys ever need, um, Mrs. Tomaso is here. Uh, the rest of the, the staff is here. I'm here. And there's a lot of good people that have graduated from Mercury that you guys probably don't even know about. Um, there's just infinite resources out there for you guys. So. If you guys ever need any of those resources, like I said, please feel free to reach out to me. You guys can take a picture of that with your phone. I don't know what you guys want to do, but I'd be more than happy to help any single one of you guys.